guess that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. I've been waiting all week long for Sunday to come so I can sing my song. Have a little church and do our thing. Can do the Sunday school swing. Yeah, yeah. Sunday school swing. All right. Charge of the bad love, Jericho. 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 Charge of the bad love, Jericho. And the walls came tumbling down. Charge of the bad love, Jericho. Jericho. Jericho, Josh of the Battle of Jericho, when the walls came tumbling, tumbling down. I've been waiting all week on for Sunday to come so I can sing my song, have a little church, and do our thing. Everybody's rocking to the Sunday school swing. Sunday school swing He's got the whole world in his hands 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 Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome back to Sunday School. I'm Miss Katie, and if you're here joining us today, be sure to pop over into the chat feed and say hello. Well, fruit reflects the character of the tree on which it grows. If it's an apple tree, it's going to produce apples. And if it's an orange tree, it's going to produce oranges. And when you bring that analogy over into the spiritual realm, this truth emerges. The more you submit your life to Christ, the more like Him you are going to become. James 1 verse 22 is our Bible memory verse for this month. And it says, but don't just listen to God's word, but do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. Will you join me now in practicing our Bible memory verse song? And following that, we're going to sing, This Is Our Mission. It begins with you and me filling ourselves with the fruit of the Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can give us the power to overflow all of those attributes of God into the lives of others. James 1 verse 22 James 1 verse 22 Don't just listen to God's word You must do what it says Do what it says Don't just listen to God's word You must do what it says Do what it says Otherwise you are only fooling yourself James 1 verse 22 James 1 verse 22 James 1 verse 22 James 1 verse 
verse 22. Don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Do what it says. Don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. James 1 verse 22. James 1 verse 22. Welcome to Sunday School. Jason and I are so glad to have you guys here with us today. So we like to start out with a question of the day. So our question of the day today is what is something you've always wanted to do? So go ahead and think about that and we're going to come back to that at the end of our lesson. Yeah, so today we're actually going to have a little activity or a little game here and feel free to join us if you'd like. All you need is a piece of paper and like a marker or a pen or some kind of crayon, you know, whatever you want to draw with. So um, just get one of those real quick while I kind of explain what we're going to need to do. So, all again, it's a piece of paper. You can choose, you want a blue marker or do you want the black marker? Um, I'm going to pick the black marker. The black marker? All right, I'll go with blue. 
So it's pretty simple. All you need to do is be able to write out your name. Okay. Simple enough, right? Sounds just good. However you would do it is write out your name. You can just do your first name if you want. Mine is really short. It's only three letters. That's not so. as fair <laughs> as mine. I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was an easy game, right? Yeah. So I have, of course, Jason. And mine's Amy. And that's the game. That's it? No, I'm just oh, kidding. Okay. So what you need to do now is take the marker, pen, whatever, and use your other hand and see if you can write out your name. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. <laughs> okay, so I'm if you're right-handed, write with your left hand. Yes. If you're left-handed, write with your right hand. Yes. All right. So let's try this. <laughs> oh, boy. Hopefully you guys have a little bit better luck <laughs> than us right now. It is not good. See, I have a sister who's left-handed, so this oh, would be true. really easy for her. Yeah. Okay. It's like, you know, like when you play baseball, mm -hmm. you know, like it's easy to hold a baseball bat like playing there. But if you ever try to go from the other side of the plate, it's like, I don't even know how to hold a baseball <laughs> bat the other way. Like, it's hard. Like, All right, how simple. Did yours turn? Not good. So, it's not too bad. Yeah. It's the, a little shaky. The A almost looks like an N with a mark across yeah. it. But we did all right. Looks okay. Okay, so mine looks a little shaky too. But like I said, mine's really short. Yours is short and so simple, but yeah. It's pretty nice. So, so we'll see. Hopefully that turned out a little bit better for you guys. Yeah. And hopefully maybe some of you might be, here's your word of the day, ambidextrous. Ooh. Which means you can do it with both hands. So maybe if you are, we'd love to know. So maybe some people are very talented in that. So anyways, the point of this is kind of thinking most people are right-handed don't know so if you're left-handed that's awesome it means you're more unique and that's a cool trait to be uh, but so that's why if you ever hear the phrase that someone's their right hand man you'll hear that maybe a lot of times in history talking about maybe different leaders and they have their right hand man well the bible actually says that jesus is at the right hand of god the father you know i'm hearing some scripture or some um some songs and everything about that and it kind of means that somebody who is their a, a good leader or their trusted opinion with so today's lesson, we're gonna talk about a gentleman named Stephen. Now Stephen was a, an early leader in the church, um, somebody that the disciples put some trust in um, and that they decided for when they're trying to find some more leaders to help grow the early church. And again, this ties into our big question of the, of the unit that we want you to remember. That is, what is the church? The church is all Christians everywhere who gather together in their communities to worship and serve God. So keep that in mind as we watch this video to learn a little bit more about Stephen. Stephen was one of Jesus' followers. God blessed Stephen and gave him power to do great wonders and signs. One day, some Jews began to argue with Stephen. The Holy Spirit helped Stephen speak with wisdom, so no matter how hard the Jews tried, they could not win the argument. The Jews lied about Stephen. They said he had spoken against God. The people dragged Stephen to the Sanhedrin, the Jewish court, and told more lies. We heard Stephen say that Jesus will destroy the temple and change the laws that Moses gave us, they said. Is this true? The high priest asked Stephen. Stephen began to preach about Jesus. He reminded the court about Abraham. God had made promises to Abraham and his son Isaac. He reminded them about Joseph and Moses. God kept Joseph safe when his brothers tried to hurt him. And God used Joseph to help all his people during a famine. When God's people lived in Egypt, God called Moses to rescue his people from Pharaoh. Moses led God's people away from Egypt, but they turned against Moses and against God. God did not give up on his people, though. He was working out a plan. God worked through Joshua and David and Solomon. Religious leaders knew these stories from the Old Testament. Stephen told them these stories to explain that Jesus was the Messiah God had promised. But just like their ancestors rejected and killed the prophets in the Old Testament, these Jewish leaders had rejected Jesus and murdered him. Stephen's words made the Jewish leaders so angry. Stephen was filled with the Holy Spirit. He looked up to heaven and saw Jesus standing there. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. The Jewish leaders screamed at the top of their lungs. They covered their ears and rushed at Stephen. 
They threw him out of the city and began throwing stones at him. Stephen called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he said, Lord, do not hold the sin against them. After this, Stephen died. Stephen was killed because he was a Christian. Jesus told his followers that they would be persecuted, hated, hurt, or even killed for loving him. Jesus also said that those who suffer for him would be blessed. We can face suffering in this life because Jesus suffered first. He died and then rose again. And he is waiting for us in heaven. What a powerful testimony that Stephen's life was. Yeah, so it is a little bit sad, you might think, but again, it's a powerful testimony from Stephen that he was killed really just because of his beliefs in God and in, in Jesus. And as the Bible tells us that uh, we might be persecuted um, or made fun of or things like that because of our belief in Jesus. But Jesus did say because um, it's okay for us to suffer because he suffered and that he's there as a blessing uh, to us. And that no matter what, as we believe in God and to believe in Jesus saving um, us from our sin, that we'll be able to be in heaven with the right hand of the Father, of course, being Jesus. So that kind of brings us to our story point today, which is a simple point, but it's important to remember that Stephen preached about Jesus no matter what. So that's an important part to remember at the story point. Remember, no matter what, he was still continuing to preach about Jesus. Now, one thing about Stephen um, that I think is kind of interesting to say, because I don't think I see this as often now, but Stephen, maybe you know some people named Stephen, maybe your name is Stephen, but I always think Stephen spelled S-T-E-V-E-N. Mm. But Stephen in the Bible is spelled S-T-E-P-H-E-N. So, interesting fact for you to remember, if you see that in the Bible, that's the Stephen we're talking about, the P-H. That's so interesting. So this actually brings us to our question of the day, is what is something you've always wanted to do? Mm. So what is something you've always wanted to do, Jason? So something I've always wanted to do? I've always wanted to jump out of an airplane and go, you know, take a parachute out of a plane. I think it'll be super fun. You'll have to do that one on your own. I don't think <laughs> You're I not going to join me? No. <laughs> so something that I've always wanted to do, and I'm actually starting to do it this year, is I've always wanted to learn sign language. And I actually wanted to teach you guys some today. So I've been learning the alphabet. And like you just said, Stephen is spelled two different ways. And in the Bible, it's spelled S-T-E. P-H-E-N. So I thought it would be fun if I taught you guys how to spell Stephen. I'm excited for this. Okay, so you can either use your right hand if you're right-handed or your left hand if you're left-handed. So Stephen starts with an S. So we're gonna kind of like clench our hand into a fist. Got so this it. is S, T. We're going to put our thumb underneath our very first finger. Okay. What's the next letter? E. E. So we're gonna make it E like this. Kind of looks like a claw. Sure. T E this is the P, P instead of a V. Yep. So P, we're gonna point our two fingers down and our thumb is kind of in the middle between the two. And then H looks like this. Two fingers out. And then we have another E. e. And then we end with an N. And the N kind of looks like a T, but you're in between your middle finger this between, time. Okay. Yep. So let's try it one more time. Got so it. S, T, T E. e. P-H-E-N. -E awesome. That was so much fun. Thanks for learning along with me, guys. Thanks for sharing that. And so I think your goal is maybe to do one of those each week with uh, some of our theme for each week. So hopefully you come back and learn some new ways to spell uh, different words in sign language. And hopefully you enjoy that, as I'm sure we're going to enjoy it as well. So um, thanks again for staying here with us. Remember um, our theme, or excuse me, our, our challenge for yep. your next couple of weeks. Uh, do you want to tell them about the challenge? Yeah, our challenge, kind of similar to our question of the day, but our challenge right now is to learn something new for 2021. So maybe you're still trying to figure out researching or even asking other people what they're learning and just try to figure out something that you want to learn something new this year. Yeah. So keep that in mind. We'll talk about it again about in a couple weeks. So thank you again for joining us and we'll see you again next week.